so the question is, are we using any accelerated diagnostic protocols if we weren't a chest pain center that kind of has its own status established uh, thing? Yeah, I'll tell you what I do. I mean, it is my opinion. So there may be some people who argue this, you know, it's not the right way to go, and I'm okay with that, but I don't have any evidence to back up their plan either. Um, so, the, uh, so what I, if, if they have, if they have, uh, if they have pain that is consistent, constant pain in a reliable patient for greater than six hours, I'm fine with a single trope blue well. All right, this is something I'm assuming I'm, I'm you know, considering ACS. Okay, lower risk, intermediate risk people, right? <clears throat> Not high risk, right? I'm fine with that six hour rule out. ECG is normal, trope undetectable, pain greater than six hours. I feel comfortable ruling them out and, and getting them follow up. That's assuming I can get them follow up, okay? Um, if I can't get them follow up, then I may consider other options. Um, if they are presenting within that six hour window, then I will keep in the department and rule them out. All right, I'll get an ECG on arrival, serial ECG is there to follow, get a tr trope on arrival, and if I can get an ultra sensitive troponin, then I'll carry them out for four hours and rule them out. So I, if I wasn't at this center with an established plan, I would be much more aggressive. I would be okay with a two or three hour delta trope, serial EKGs, and no stress test if that's what my local private practice group, um, especially, and I would do that even with current generation troponins, which is a bit riskier, but that would be a low score. So there'd be like a low heart score patient if you were using that. I wouldn't be using a formal score, but that is more aggressive than many, but there's increasing data, especially if you get a high sensitivity troponin. There, I think there's pretty compelling evidence that two hour delta tropes in a select group that's not super high risk. No rays and no, negative on both. Undetectable or like less 0.03. Than, yeah, like say it went from less than 0 0.01 to 0 0.03 or 0 0.02. It's technically not a negative. Like, that's knowing. Yeah, that, that's essentially within the error of the test. Mm -hmm. But, the but there, the problem with the ultra sensitive ones are there is a range. But if it if it really goes up a lot, even if it's still low, I would get another one two hours later. You're you're still kind of in the same scenario. But here we have an established protocol, and that's really huge. Do not be a cowboy with chest pain, folks. If you see enough people with chest pain, you're going to send someone home that's going to die in the next month because that's what happens to old people, especially old people with chest pain. With everything else we do, we're to avoid missing the one. We're spending a gazillion dollars on the mini. Right. To avoid missing the one. The cross here getting severe. Right. I mean, I would submit to you that if you want to use a advanced uh, accelerated diagnostic protocol, the one that's getting the most breast nationally would be heart, which you already mentioned. It's, it's composed of history, EKG, age, risk factors, and troponin. The only thing I would, and there's pretty good evidence emerging in the EM world that, that, that it's a safe way to manage patients. You're not. But I would say that the, the, a lot of the EM literature is not strictly the way the heart was originally described, and that the people that are uh, advocating using it, many are saying that you don't just look at the time zero when they get there, but you repeat an EKG at three hours and also repeat it and repeat a contemporary at three hours. And if it's negative, then you just have very low risk of uh, maze or major respiratory events. So you don't even have to get 72 hour follow up. Presuming it comes up negative. Your, your miss rate is very low uh, in the neighborhood, maybe 1% or so, maybe even less. Yeah, Brad? Um, I mean, this, this in particular for me is a place where you get the patient involved in the decision. Um, if they have health insurance, essentially they're coming to you and they're paying. Um, I, I think you present them with the facts and with their risk is. is as accurately as you can give it and let them make the decision. If they want to stay and get a stress test the next day and you have that available, then you do it. But I think a lot of people, when they find out how low their risk is, they want to go home. And, um, you know, to me, that's the way to go. If you, if you show up in a restaurant and order something, um, and in this particular case, you're not giving them the option to get anything off the menu that they want. You're giving them the option of the things that you think are reasonable. Um, and, there's so many different opinions on this. To me, it doesn't make sense to not do that. Rich, are you 72 hours stressing those low risk folks? I have no problem not doing it, to yeah. be honest with you. Okay. Hey, you don't either, right now. Uh, yeah, in my heart of hearts, I don't believe in it. I think exercise chest tests are just garbage tests. Yeah. They're they're yeah, terrible. Clinical and that, that said, that's and partially because my boss is in the room, I still schedule them. I mean, you know. 
right? Yeah. Uh, I just don't. You, Same question. I wrote the protocol. Of course, I follow it. <laughs> yeah. I also yeah. review it every month, and I will tell you that the rule in uh, the the seventy two hour follow up uh, stress echoes have never led to a bypass or a coronary intervention. Now they've led to casts and more studies and that kind of stuff. So should never be been anybody. So is CT. Got it. Now, huh? you won't That's what we don't do CT as well. So CT. So stress like CT. Yeah. Less 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 so we've done a lot, Brad. We've done a lot of stress tests, and nobody's had any major intervention from them. So the real answer to your question is, I follow the protocol, but after I get my initial stuff, I talk to the patient and make sure that they're aware of roughly what their their risk is before I put them over there and then talk to the patient much like Brad is suggesting that they need to be aware that they're going to spend overnight or they're going to spend eight hours over an OBS unit and it's unlikely that this is a heart attack. I just want to clarify, the pathway has never had an intervention after They're not stress testing. The outpatient stress tests have never led to a major intervention. Does that include stents? It's included stents. Not, 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 not that I know of. Uh, two years. Yep. But see, Steve's doing a study on that this summer, so I don't want to buy it. So the ones where they do the long pathway, they do the stress. Those have led to stuff. Okay.